Hello my friends and welcome to another edition of Taryn Talks about teaching literature. Okay, so we just finished an assignment in one of my classes where we read a YA novel and then um, created a text around the theme of that novel and then we like created a teaching plan on how we would implement that novel in the classroom. So uh, to tie things up, I just kind of wanted to talk about the novel I read a little bit, uh, review it in case anybody out there uh, really likes YA literature like I do and just wants to read a YA book. And then show you the text that I created and I'm not very artistic but I will say that the pictures really work so I'll show you this later so first things first I read the novel Audacious by Gabrielle Prendergast and just to kind of give you a summary of what this book is about it's about this girl named Raphael who basically moves from her hometown to a new town and in her old town she was bullied and she didn't really fit in. So when she moves to this new town she creates a new identity for herself and calls herself Ella. But it turns out that Ella is kind of just a different sort of misfit. Um, she falls in love with the wrong boy, she creates very explicit art that ends up with her getting expelled and, um, facing child pornography charges, and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in Ella's life that she talks about but she, she never really deals with, and, um, I think it's a really good read. It's very theme heavy. There are so many themes in this book, I can't even begin to touch on all of them. But the theme central to it is definitely identity and the way we struggle to find our identity and the journey that we go on in our attempts to find our identity. Um, so with that being said, <laughs> I'll just know, oh yeah, I'll just know that it is written in verse, which I think is super cool because I am a huge fan of Ellen Hopkins. Uh, you can't see, her books are like right here. You can see Burned. <laughs> um, I have almost all of her books. I think she recently released a new one, which I'm going to have to go buy because dedicated fan here. Um... I love YA novels that are written in verse. There's just something about them that I find so powerful. And I actually totally hated poetry until I found free verse and realized things don't have to rhyme, there doesn't have to be any specific meter, and I think that verse is one way, and spoken word poetry as well, are great ways to really like show kids that poetry can be fun because <laughs> sonnets and uh, a few other types of poetry are not really my jam. Alright, so I think the importance of a teacher creating a text, especially if you are going to require your students to create a text, is to show them not only the importance of exploring your creativity and challenging yourself to create something and take it from a seed to a total tree and just go through the entire publication process, but writing alongside your students shows them that, you know, even though you're the teacher, you still do stuff like this. And um, as somebody that has been a writer my entire life, I really just want to encourage my students a love for writing. and. I think that begins with giving them the opportunity to create their own texts. Um, so, I'm to, actually, I'm just going to read this to you guys. Uh, 
and I'll show you the pictures as I go. So it's called I Lost Myself in You. Okay. I don't know how to be without him. My therapist asks, what do you mean by that? And I can't help but glance out the window at the cloudless sky, letting my hair fall into my face. I answer, I mean that I don't know how to be me without him. I was with him for so long that I just grew used to it being us, not me and him, us. A constant sense of togetherness. And I forgot what it was like to be me. I don't know who I am anymore. I call myself T. Just the letter, a single sharp sound, something that can't be forgotten. He called me by my full name, but I'm not the person I was with him. Being his, it didn't really matter to me what else I was. I didn't always love who we were together. I could feel the destruction starting in my chest and like a forest fire, it burned constant until it extinguished. And now I think my insides are ash. Still, I loved him. I thought that was enough. It wasn't. It didn't matter that I was willing to change every single thing about me if it meant I could keep his heart. As it turns out, we don't get to keep the people that aren't meant to be in our life as much as we want them to be ours. I'm trying to find the person I was before him, but maybe I can't be that person anymore because he happened. Being with him changed me. I just can't figure out what it changed me into. I'm trying to find myself again. I'm sorry it's taking so long. I'm sorry I forgot how to love things like the sunshine and the mountains and dipping my toes into glacier water because I was so consumed with loving him. I was never taught love could be as dangerous as getting caught in a riptide until I wound up on shore feeling stripped bare of my identity. I feel like a blank slate, but maybe that's a good thing. I need to relearn myself. I need to find the me that I have been all along. The me that is combined of every me that I thought was so different until I realized they combined to make up a me that has always been me. I can be every shade, but I know they are always mixing to create a me that is constantly growing, constantly evolving, constantly becoming. I have been growing without him. Emerging from beneath the ashes, I started again. I learned that my life has always been growing like a redwood, and he was just a single ring in my always expanding wood. And on my surface, I have carved the letter T again and again. A reminder that I own my happiness, not him. So that's my little identity text. Um, as you can tell, it is deeply personal. <laughs> um, and it's kind of the story of how I found myself after I lost myself in a relationship that was very important to me, but very much not right for me. And, um, yeah, I, I have, like, a whole bunch of resources on the book Audacious and my reflections on it that I might put up on this site so that I can share those with anybody else that happens to come across this blog. But I really just wanted to like kind of put those out there and show 
a book and how you can take a theme and just go with it and encourage students to write and even to just push yourself to write because I know that I had been craving creating for the longest time and I didn't feel satisfied until I put this book together and I know the images seem really simple and not important at all but if you didn't catch all the colors come together in the end to combine to make up who I am as a person because I am so multifaceted and um, I think that's really beautiful. And one last image that I just want to show you because this looks like an accident. It looks like I like let the purple bleed into the blue and just didn't care, but it was actually intentional because it's showing how our relationship totally bled into who I was as an individual and changed me and I really lost myself. Um, so that's about it. Um, I'm going to be reading When Everything Happens in the Movies next and I'm probably just going to sit down and read this entire thing tonight. So once I finish it, I will give you guys a review because I am really excited to read this book and I think everybody should probably be excited to read this book. So I will talk about this in another video. Alright, see you guys.